And the three two pitch is on the way and it's swung on a miss on a breaking ball away. And that's how it ends for the Oakland A's. They scored two runs. They battle back in the ninth. They had this high run at the plate. And a game number 162 of 2024. And in the final game for the A's as the Oakland A's, they are beaten by the Seattle Mariners by the final of 6-4. to four. And looking to our left, most of the A's are standing on the top step of the dugout. And then when they leave the dugout and they head up the runway and head to the clubhouse here at T-Mobile Park in Seattle, that will mark the last time we will see the name Oakland on the front of the A's uniform. After 9,002 games as the Oakland A's, beginning on the 10th of April of 1968, and even though the A's were swept in this three-game series, nothing that happened here could blunt the feelings that we all felt on Thursday at the Coliseum. The love, the emotion, the passion on a day of sadness, but a day that was also a beautiful day as the A's played their last game in Oakland. And I know for Vince, there are so many emotions running through you as the A's finish their 57th season as the Oakland A's. And for you, and as we've talked here in the course of the last week or so, and it's, uh, I know a whole range of feelings you must have, and it's just been such a pleasure for me and all of us to have, to have worked with you for all these years, man. I'm just wondering your final thoughts. Well, uh, today was more of a celebration, a chance to, you know, listen to some old stories and kind of take people a little bit behind the curtain about why it was so joyful to do what I did sitting next to you for 19 years and thankful to the fans and just really humbled by mm -hmm. what they uh, what they have let me know um, we were a part of history you know you know watching a team change their identity and it, well, you know it's 162 games of, of of a slow process of watching that happen you know there's a finish line out there and it kept on getting closer and closer and next thing you knew it was right in the mirror and it happened uh, you know this this is a I think for me, this 2024 team will have stories that will be told about them in a different light, but still in a positive light as opposed to what we've said all along about Reggie or like Joe Rudy or Catfish or Ricky or Eck and Stu and, you know, Raleigh and Jason and Mac and all that. I mean, they, they all had a chance to have special winning moments. This club had to in, endure a lot of things. And I think for a franchise that has had, you know, Dick Williams at the helm, Tony La Russa at the helm, Bob Melvin at the helm, and others, of course. But what Mark Hotze had to do this year, uh, which was much more than manage this team, he, he, had, he had to guide a community. And he was the man that was put at the forefront. It wasn't something he asked for. It was something that was kind of thrust upon him. And so much credit goes Mark's way for the way that he handled it. You know, he was honest, certainly at times, but he also was trying to be positive and, and uplifting and understanding of the pain that people that have worn green and gold their entire lives, what they're going through and what it means to say Oakland across the chest. Uh, I thought he did a wonderful job about that. I, look, I, I'm not happy I'm leaving, that I'm not coming back. I certainly want to continue to do this, and I hope our paths will cross again somewhere, but we'll deal with that you know, down the road. Today was a, just a day to reflect and have some fun. Yeah. And it was a blast. Uh, other than the outcome of the game, which would have would have been fun. But well, but it was just, it was a great ride, and I'm very thankful to you, very thankful to the A's for giving me that chance, and beyond blessed with the amount of support that was uh, sent my way, my family's way. Yeah, you know, it's, and it was just... It was fitting that the A's, as they mounted that comeback in the ninth inning, that eventually would wind up two runs shy. You could hear the let's go Oakland yeah. here, and it became loud. 
here, and it was really, really cool to hear. And this is a historic franchise, and as we've mentioned several times over this weekend, going back to 1968, the A's have the sixth best record in baseball. Yeah. I mean, that, the third best in the American League. This isn't, wasn't some downtrodden franchise that spent four years somewhere and then moved. I mean, this is one of the more historic franchises in a historic run beginning in 1968. And just to offer some kudos and thanks, Delaire Lures, who heads up our broadcasting operation for both radio and TV. I know you mentioned several of these people earlier, Vince, but... Uh, the gentlemen in our studio, uh, Robert Costa and Scott Pastorino and Vince Toche, Michael J. Baird, 29 years with me, 19 with you, 30 years on A's radio, as many as 50 years working at the Coliseum. And, you know, Townie and the commander on A's cast, the entire A's PR and commu uh, communication staff for their help, uh, the A's players and staff, the whole group and the traveling party and Mark Conce and Scott Emerson and Bobby Crosby, who were our one, two, and three hitters on the pregame show with our interviews, first three games of those series. And you know, Michael and Patrick, our uh, interns, were so instrumental this year as well. And all the folks who, you know, filled in for Mike engineering when Mike was off doing the Olympics and all of his other various assignments. And all of our engineers who helped us out on the road, including Matt Harden over here in Seattle the last couple of days, Lloyd Glazer on Friday night, and I am I know I'm going to leave out some people, but the entire staff and group of, we mentioned earlier, so many people with the A's who work behind the scenes and uh, in difficult circumstances the last couple of years, let's face it, you know. I, I do want to, because as we found out, when you're not around, it takes a village. 